Can you explore three California national parks in one day? Well, this week I'm going to share one of my favorite ways. I've done this multiple times. We're going to head out to Yosemite, Sequoia, and Kings Canyon. Come join me for a full day. It's almost impossible to beat the views of Yosemite Falls here in Yosemite Valley. We're going to enjoy the Valley Loop, catch the falls, before we continue out on today's adventures. Enjoying the boardwalk and heading out to Lower Yosemite Falls is the perfect start to any adventure, in my opinion. One could certainly spend all day enjoying Lower Yosemite Falls and the loop here. The paved 1.2 mile loop trail to Lower Yosemite Falls has less than 50 feet in elevation gain, making it the perfect way to start our morning and stretch our legs here in Yosemite Valley. Please remember to stay on the main marked path here on the loop to Lower Yosemite Falls to protect the natural resources here. Before heading to the main viewing area, I recommend taking the short wood bridge to the side path leading to the John Muir sign. Here you'll have great views of the falls without the major crowds that you'll have during the summer at the official viewpoint. Yosemite Falls rages in the spring and it dries to a trickle by late summer, but the viewpoint is a great spot year round. In fact, this marks where John Muir once built a sugar pine cabin. And for details on Yosemite Falls, see my full YouTube video linked right here. The easy, gentle path to Lower Yosemite Falls is a crowd favorite, perfect for families and adventurers of all ages and skill sets. Just be aware this area can get pretty crowded in the popular summer months. It's perfect to stretch our legs here along the Sentinel Meadow Loop before heading back to our car at Sentinel Bridge and then off to our next park. There are many informational placards that dot the boardwalk along Sentinel Meadow so you can get fascinating information about the history and the local plant and wildlife here. Consider a quick pit stop at Famous Tunnel View before heading out to Kings Canyon National Park from Yosemite. Less than a three hour drive from Tunnel View, you can reach Kings Canyon National Park and the Big Stump entrance as we head for our second park adventure, Big Stump Trail. This trail passes many fallen trunks and you'll see a grassy meadow along the way. Coming in at just under two miles, with less than 200 feet in elevation change, this is a perfect, gentle introduction to Kings Canyon National Park. The Shattered Giant is definitely a trail highlight. This massive sequoia looks as though it exploded when it fell over a century ago. It's believed the Mark Twain tree was 1,300 years old when it fell after two men spent 13 days sawing it. For full details on this hike, make sure to check out my blog post at flyingdawnmarie.com or for a virtual visit, watch my YouTube video, vlog number 99, linked right here.
located less than a five mile drive from Big Stump Trail is another highlight here in Kings Canyon National Park. We're heading to Grant Grove. Grant Grove is 154 acres secluded in Kings Canyon National Park. The Grant Tree was named in 1867 in honor of Ulysses S. Grant. President Coolidge proclaimed this tree the nation's Christmas tree in 1926. The age of the Grant tree has been disputed, but it's safe to say it's at least 1,500, if not 2,000 years old and still growing. This loop is less than half a mile, home to wonderful wildlife and nearly two dozen mature sequoia trees. The Gamlin Cabin was originally built in 1872 by the Gamlin brothers, who grazed their cattle here. The fallen monarch is thought to have fallen over 300 years ago after it was hollowed out by fire before it fell. For more details on Grant Grove, see my full blog post or watch my YouTube video linked here. Once we're done exploring Grant Grove, we'll drive for 50 miles out of Kings Canyon National Park and into Sequoia National Park for our next adventure. We're going to two of my favorite spots in Sequoia National Park, Morrow Rock and Hanging Rock, which are right next to each other. The hike to Morrow Rock is less than a mile round trip with about 200 feet in elevation gain and some spectacular park views. While the hike is relatively easy, you have to get up 350 stairs to reach the top. The stone carved steps and ramps here were constructed in 1931 by the Civilian Conservation Corps, thanks to FDR's New Deal. The stair steps are rather easy to walk, but the path can get quite narrow in places, and this hike probably isn't for anyone with a fear of heights. A few staircases will give you this payoff. From the top of Morrow Rock, you can see Hanging Rock way in the distance. Once you've climbed down Morrow Rock, it's just a quarter of a mile to the Hanging Rock Trail. And the Hanging Rock Trail is just half a mile out and back with 100 feet in elevation change. Make sure to stop along the dirt path before you reach the granite of Hanging Rock and you'll get some stunning views of Morrow Rock in the distance. You'll know you've reached the top when you see the precariously balanced giant piece of granite. At the 
top of this hike, you'll have some fabulous views of General's Highway below, and this is one of the few areas in the park where you'll be towering over the giant sequoias below. For details on Morrow Rock and Hanging Rock, see my blog post or watch my full YouTube video linked here. Now, no visit to Sequoia National Park is complete without visiting the world's largest tree, so join me as we head out to see General Sherman. The trail to General Sherman is a fourth of a mile each way with about a 200 foot elevation change and the entire path is paved. General Sherman is the world's largest tree measured by volume. It is 52,508 cubic feet. My favorite hike in all of Sequoia is the Congress Trail, located just next to the General Sherman tree. On your way out of this area, make sure to drive through the famous Sequoia National Park, Tunnel Log. This massive tree fell in December 1937, and instead of removing the whole thing, they made a hole for cars to drive through. Our last stop on this week's National Parks Adventure is Tunnel Rock. This famous rock was actually part of the old road and the only way traffic could access the west side of General's Highway until 1997. This makes a quick but photo worthy stop. Thank you so much for joining me this week in three of my favorite California national parks. For more information on each of the spots we visited today, see my full blog post at flyingdawnmarie.com. And if you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button and subscribe. Until next week, I hope you find adventure and encouragement wherever you go. Bye.